Welcome to another boring topic. Today we will be doing an unboxing and review of the only product that Apple still sells from its wholly owned subsidiary, Claris, called FileMaker Pro. FileMaker Pro is a relational database with many advanced features and a devoted group of users, and might very well be the oldest Apple product still in active use and development, apart from perhaps the Apple operating system itself. What we will be taking a look at today is FileMaker Pro 2, which was released in 1992. But first, some history. The story of FileMaker doesn't start with Apple, but rather with an early MS-DOS database from the early 1980s, when a small company named Nashoba Systems released a database product called Nutshell Plus into the rapidly expanding MS-DOS software market. While certainly not the first database aimed at home computers, it was one of the first to make an attempt at ease of use, with a menu-driven interface that was friendlier than most of its competitors, making it far easier to use than alternatives such as DBase. Nashoba did not sell Nutshell Plus themselves. Instead, they let a company known as Leading Edge handle all the marketing and sales while they focused on product development. Things went along reasonably well, and the product received favorable reviews, although it was up against an already somewhat busy market, with DBase far from their only competitor. Then, in 1984, Apple released the Macintosh computer, whose graphical user interface was easy to use and clearly would be a great fit for a product like Nutshell Plus. But there was a problem. Leading Edge considered themselves an MS-DOS-only operation and refused to publish any Macintosh software. This meant that if Neshoba was going to sell Nutshell Plus into the Macintosh market, they were going to either have to sell it themselves or find another publisher. Neshoba chose to find another publisher, and in 1985 a publisher called Forethought brought Nutshell Plus to the Macintosh. However, it was not called Nutshell Plus, as Leading Edge had the rights to use the name, so Neshoba renamed Nutshell Plus to FileMaker, and started the version numbering over again at 1.0. The newly named FileMaker did very well in the Macintosh market, as its careful design and avoidance of interface complexity made it fit in well with the Macintosh user paradigm. It didn't hurt matters at all either that it faced almost no serious competition from any other database on the Macintosh. Neshoba then decided to number future FileMaker releases according to the current Macintosh hardware models. This was only the first of several differing naming schemes that make it very confusing to track FileMaker versions, and I am indebted to the website of veteran FileMaker developer John Osborne for his excellent posts on the history of FileMaker, which I will be linking to below. FileMaker 1.0 was followed by FileMaker Plus in 1986, coinciding with the release of the Mac Plus. Sometime in either 1986 or 1987, Microsoft purchased Forethought, picking up the rights to PowerPoint, and trying to strike a deal with Neshoba to purchase FileMaker as well. Neshoba turned down Microsoft's offer of $75,000 in royalties a month, reasoning that since FileMaker was already bringing in $6 million a year, they would be better off publishing it themselves. This required a considerable amount of work on Neshoba's part, but they successfully pulled it off and in June of 1988 released FileMaker 4, apparently abandoning their previous naming scheme of tracking Macintosh models. Models. This would, however, be their only self-published release, as in 1988 they agreed to sell FileMaker to Apple Computer, who published FileMaker 2 in August of 1988 under their wholly owned spin-off Claris, where it joined other products like MacWrite and MacPaint. Published just two months after Neshoba had released FileMaker 4, FileMaker 2 was essentially exactly the same thing as FileMaker 4, it just had a different splash screen with the Claris branding. Claris released the next version of FileMaker two years later, in October of 1990. This version once again had a new naming and numbering scheme, as the product was now called FileMaker Pro. This new naming convention finally stuck, and FileMaker Pro in 1990 was followed by FileMaker Pro 2 in 1992, which also marked FileMaker's first release for Windows as well as Mac. FileMaker Pro has continued to see steady releases up until the present day, with Apple bringing all Claris products other than FileMaker back in-house in 1998, so Claris, now renamed FileMaker Inc., could focus solely on its most successful product. These days, FileMaker is up to version 18 and supports Mac OS X, Windows, and even has an iPad and iPhone app, FileMaker Go, enabling mobile users to access and use a FileMaker database. FileMaker Inc. itself underwent a naming change in 2019 as it changed its name back to Claris. What we will be unboxing today is a brand new copy of FileMaker Pro 2.1, still sealed in its original box and shrink wrap from 1993. This edition requires at least a minimum of a Macintosh Plus with System 6.0, equipped with a hard drive and at least one megabyte of memory. It can take advantage of some of the features of Apple's new System 7 as well, although that would require a minimum of an additional megabyte of RAM, with Apple recommending at least four megabytes in total. The recommended specs call for an LC or Mac 2 series, such as the Wicked Fast 2FX, and I would personally be doubtful of how useful FileMaker would be on a Macintosh Plus with only one megabyte of RAM.
let's see, how are you supposed to open this? Okay. Oh, wow. Nice big stack of manuals. Definitely don't see that too often. It looks like we got a big concrete divider in here that actually doesn't actually hold anything. It's just there to take up space, I guess. Yeah, so almost half the thickness of this box isn't actually anything. It's just stuff, stuffing. Looks like we have the software license here. Please read the license on this package before opening this package. Opening this package means that you agree to the terms and conditions of the license. That's kind of kind of scary. Just, what kind of terms and conditions am I agreeing to? Yeah. So I struggle to get this open. Claris, please register now. Oh, here it is. So FileMaker comes on two discs, standard size, three and a half inch floppy disks, copyright 1988 to 1994, Claris Corporation. Hmm. We have something on international language packs. Apparently you could get this in a Danish, Finnish, French, German, Swiss German, Italian, Norwegian, Spanish, and Swedish. Uh, and about half that number if you were on Windows. Uh, these language packs are available for $49 each, so these are apparently not included with here. You could just order them. It looks like for 800k discs, so, because this will run on the old, this will run on very old Macintoshes uh, from 1985 is the oldest Mac this will run on, so just basically this will run on any Mac other than the original one, some of which might have the old 800k discs. Get more power from your new Clara software. Special offers inside. What have we here? Free FileMaker Pro tips. Return the card below to get your free issue of Inside FileMaker Pro. Very cool. Have the Claris support portfolio. Um, this says uh, read these instructions before using FileMaker 2 files with the FileMaker Pro application. Due to a problem in FileMaker 2, some FileMaker 2 files may have been inadvertently corrupted during normal use. Although this problem has been corrected in FileMaker Pro, FileMaker 2 files that have already been corrupted will not work properly in FileMaker Pro and may cause you to lose data. So, Claris's very confusing numbering scheme. This is FileMaker Pro 2. This is talking about FileMaker 2, which is not actually the second version of FileMaker. Um, it was actually either the third or the fourth version of it. It tracked, um, it was the version for the Mac 2 back when they decided they were going to have FileMaker versions numbered according to whatever the latest Macintosh computer was. So this is just warning that if you've got that older, so that'd be about two versions prior to this one. If you have one of those, it's possible your database is just going to get messed up if you try and open it in here. So you should make a backup first. We have all of these services from Claris. So apparently, if I want an ongoing relationship with Claris that extends beyond the standard product support period, I can get it for $129 per year. Uh, for the base Claris Advantage support, all the way up to uh, Claris Help Desk support, which is uh, $3,999 per year. What a bargain. So like then we have the FileMaker Pro Quick Reference. So this is just kind of keyboard shortcuts, common things. Uh, front and back, not a, no folds here. Very cool. 
Then we have the installation and new features guide. So this, uh, this just tells you on how to install it and uh, looks like tells you okay and it's got a th uh, section on the new FileMaker Pro server um, just uh, which is a, again a separate application from this one but this would be, be it function as a host and various client databases like this version here could all connect to it so, we have the getting started guide which it's fairly decent. Uh, pages aren't numbered sequentially. It's done by by page number inside of chapter, but got some so I got some nifty tips and tricks there. It'd be kind of interesting to uh, test this out. Then we've got the FileMaker Pro templates guide. Uh, FileMaker Pro has always come with uh, templates, kind of get you started. I'm assuming this is uh, I'm assuming this is just a guide to whatever ones are included with it. Uh, don't mess with that too much. And then here we have Shrink Wrapped, the FileMaker Pro User's Guide. So I actually have the next one for this. I found it at a thrift store a while ago. So it actually, so this would, uh, this is FileMaker, the FileMaker Pro 4 User Guide, um, which again I already have. And then this would be the FileMaker Pro User's Guide. Um, it says FileMaker Pro, but it is actually, I mean, it came with FileMaker Pro 2. So I don't know what their their numbering. Again, FileMaker's numbering has always been kind of sporadic. It took them about seven or eight years before they decided on a common sense way that uh, they were going to number their versions. So let's uh, take a look inside the user's guide here. user's guide and this thing's fairly substantial uh, yep definitely looks totally brand new not surprising hmm. all right Now it's time to install FileMaker Pro 2 and see just how the experience compares with using FileMaker today. My test computer for this will be my G3 PowerBook Lombard, which is enormously faster than FileMaker Pro 2 was ever intended to run on. It boasts a 400MHz PowerPC G3 processor, a whopping 512MB of RAM, and a positively cavernous 4GB hard drive. Since my PowerBook lacks a floppy drive module currently, I was forced to download the FileMaker 2.1 installer from a Macintosh Abandonware site. I then use Toast to mount Disk 1. Disk 2 is not actually required for the install as it only has extensions and templates. Once Disk 1 is mounted, installation is as simple as clicking the .sit file and using Stuff It to expand it into a folder I prepared. FileMaker then can be launched and we'll go through a very simple setup that really just asks for a name, business name, and serial. The serial number in particular does not need to be filled out as FileMaker does not require a valid serial in order to be installed. At this point, there was no realistic way to check for a valid serial over the early internet, and FileMaker apparently has no internal list of valid serials to check an entered serial against, although I could of course have just used the serial off the box I bought if I had needed to. Once we click through the single setup screen, we are dropped right into a flow to create our first database. This version of FileMaker is radically simpler than current versions, which is unsurprising as it was released at a time when the World Wide Web was still very new, and what was required of a desktop database was very limited in comparison with the demands of today. FileMaker Pro 2 is not a relational database, and is very much focused on providing a single user experience. This was, however, the first version that could be purchased for a server, allowing a central server to host the database with multiple clients connecting to it. FileMaker Pro 2 also allows for the compiling of a database into a standalone runtime version that could be distributed and run without the need to own FileMaker itself. For demonstration purposes, I am going to build a simple library database. I want to be able to store the author, title, description, genre, ISBN, and book cover, along with comments about the book. I also want a central interface with a couple buttons, including a button to add a new book and a search by title option. 
This is the sort of database that FileMaker has always excelled in, so let's see how well this will work. I will need to do some basic scripting for the search as well as for the add new book flow. One of the things you quickly notice as you start going through the options for scripting in FileMaker Pro 2 is that its scripting language is very limited. It lacks the ability to directly type scripting commands as they must be selected from a menu of available commands instead, and this menu does not actually have that many, especially compared with the enormous amount of available scripting commands in current versions of FileMaker. Additionally, everything is computer-based with no thought of handheld devices, which is unsurprising as the PDA category in 1992 was almost non-existent. The term itself first was used by Apple CEO John Scully in January of 1992 in reference to the upcoming Newton, which launched in 1993. The Palm Pilot itself would not launch until 1996, along with a range of competing Windows CE devices. Later versions of FileMaker introduced the ability to work with a version of FileMaker for PDAs called FileMaker Mobile, which was eventually superseded by FileMaker Go for iOS devices. Ultimately, this is a neat piece of software that is very easy to pick up and use with minimal training. It helps a lot that this version of FileMaker was still not a relational database, making the learning curve far easier, even though that does greatly limit its abilities. Additionally, its limited set of scripting commands and program features when compared with more modern versions still get the job done for basic database tasks like this library database or even something like simple inventory databases. The biggest thing I struggled with in building this little database was scripting a proper search feature. Unlike more modern versions of FileMaker, FileMaker Pro 2 does not have the ability to bring up a dialog box asking for user input and then use whatever was typed in as a query to run against the database in whatever fashion the programmer deemed best. Instead, you have to use a somewhat clunkier method of setting up a separate layout with a dedicated field to enter the query in. Inside my test search script, I experimented with copying that field, flipping to the book information layout, going into find mode, setting the search field to the copy text, and then performing the find, but it never seemed to return the correct result, and the included manual sheds little light on scripting searches. What I eventually did was script it to go into find mode when the layout is entered from the find button, and then perform the search right there on the layout by pressing enter after entering text. The perform search button actually just takes you to the record that has already been found. That brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this look at a bit of obscure software. I really enjoyed putting it through its paces. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and consider subscribing. And if you were a FileMaker programmer back in the day that used any of the older versions of FileMaker, feel free to leave a comment. I would love to hear some of your experiences with the platform and what you were able to accomplish with it.